Hi, today we will see how to design gear trains. First, we will see what kind, what two kinds of axles we will find normally. The first kind of axle is affixed to the support. Is in the in the figure is the number one. Here you can see that the axle is tightly put together to the support, so the gear itself has bearings to rotate around the axle. The second kind of axle, uh, numbered as two in the figure, is actually attached to the gear and uh, has bearing to, uh, to allow the motion with respect to the support. Obviously, the second kind of axle is the only one able to transmit power, rotational or torsion power through itself. What, what is the definition of a gear train? So the gear train is a kinematic chain uh, comprising several gear tails. We will use, we will need a gear train whenever one of these conditions uh, happens. Mm, this is in contrast to just a pair of gear. Take that into account. So, Instead of using only a pair of gears, we will use a gear train with more than a pair of gear when either the speed ratio is larger than the, a maximum allowed number, normally it's 5, sometimes something between 5 and 7. Uh, of course, this is, uh, it has two views, two, two, two ways of looking at the ratio. One is from input to the output and from the output to the input. So that's the reason of defining the maximum and minimum ratio as one fifth or five. Another situation is when we have a ratio of a reductible to large terms in the fraction. For example, this one in the, here in the slide, 101 to 20 where there is no way to further reduce the numbers in the fraction, so we get um, numbers in the allowed range of teeth for the gears. For example, imagine that the maximum um, teeth count for a year is 100. In this case, 101 is above that maximum. Another situation is, uh, this is uh, not uh, common, but it may happen, when we need to design a gear train where the ratio is an irrational number, also when the distance, uh, those were situations for regarding the ratio only. Now we have physical or mechanical constraints. For example, the distance, the, the distance between the axles may be too large, or we may need a recurrent uh, gear train. A uh, recurrent train means that the input is aligned with the output, right? So if we are only having a pair of gears, the input is at a different height than the input. We have a distance between the axles. If we need them to be totally aligned, we need at least a pair of pairs of gears. So that's a, a gear train. Also, when a specific direction of rotation is needed, for example, a single pair of gears uh, externally connected invert the direction of rotation. If we need the direction not to be inverted, we need two consecutive pairs of gears. Historic use of gear train has been mostly for mechanical calculators or um, clocks and for example, in these pictures from the, the beautiful clock in the, in the cathedral of Strasbourg. But nowadays, obviously, they are used in mechanical engineering for mostly transmitting mechanical power. Uh, it's worth to remind you the formula for the pa mechanical power transmitted by a, by a rotational gear or a motor. Uh, in this, this formula applies both at the input or at the output, right? So the power in watts equals the product of the torque, normally in newtons, uh, newtons times uh, meters, times the um, 
angular speed in radians per second. So what are the, um, the design um, criteria for a gear train? We don't want to have a teeth count under 14 or normally 17, it depends on, on the problem. By default, you should pick either 14 or 17, at the minimum number of teeth. We may also have problem, uh, problems if the, if the fee, the number of uh, teeth is too high, normally 100 something, 150, 100 is, a, is considered to be an acceptable maximum number of teeth. Also, uh, in any pair of gears uh, directly connected to each other, the maximum ratio of velocities uh, is normally 5 or 7. Okay, that's to avoid problems like a decrease in efficiency, an increase of the wearing of the mechanisms, the noise. So another, uh, we will have to split, we will see that uh, in a moment, we will have to split a large I ratio into the product of a smaller I ratios, of partial ratios. Those partial eyes should be as similar as possible to each other. Also, uh, we should try to make the, the largest number of identical gears. So in other words, we will try to design gear trains where the number or with the, with the teeth count repeats in several of the units. That's basically for, for maintenance and to to reduce the different the number of different parts in the design. So different kinds of gear trains. The classification would be like this. First, we have the ordinary trains, where the transmission is done by means of intermediary gears. So we have the input axle, the output axle. Normally, the input is a motor. And normally we want to, um, to design reducers, speed reducers. So uh, the input is a small gear normally because we want to reduce the speed. So that's the reason of in the picture to show the motor pinion. The pinion is the name of the smaller of the pair of gears. So in a simple ordinary train, we only have, like this in this picture, one gear per axle. This is simple ordinary train. Simple because only one gear per axle. Ordinary because all the axes are fixed. They don't move. So they rotate, but they don't move. Over there. They don't translate in a space. We also have compound ordinary trains. Ordinary, because the axis still does, uh, don't move, and compound, because in each axle we find two or even more than two gears. Then we have a totally different family, which is the planetary or epicyclic gear trains. Here, sorry, some one or more uh, than one of the gear axis are translating in space. That's the key difference. They are different kinds of epicyclic gear trains, but the fundamental uh, classification reason to tell them epicyclic is that the axle, axle of rotation translates in space. So let's start with the easiest kind of gear trains, the ordinary ones. Uh, this is the you can see my mouse here. Okay, so here we have at the bottom, we have one axle, which is the input axle. And we will define, we will name a number uh, to say better. We will number the axles with a number starting from zero, one, zero, one, two, three, and four. So the output axle is this one on the top is uh, we, we may call this omega 0, omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4. Omegas will be the angular speed of each axle. 
and then we will have the driver and the driven uh, gear for each of the pairs. So on the input axle, we only have one gear, which is um, this gear, with C0 teeth count, which is connected to, is engaged to C1 prime. So the prime means that it's driven, not uh, the driver, and then uh, C1 prime moves this axle, which in turn moves C1 without the prime. Notice the difference. So C1 moves, drives C2 prime, and so on. Okay, so for n gear pairs, we will have n plus 1 axles. What is the a speed ratio of an ordinary train. So, in case of the of the compound ordinary train, we will have to account for the partial ratios between axles. So, between the axle zero and axle one, we have a speed ratio ratio of c zero divided by c one prime. Okay, because c zero is the driven and is connected to C1 prime. Then for the second uh, for the second pair we have C1, 2, C2 prime and so on. So the, this uh, pattern uh, is summarized here in this formula. It's plus minus the product of all the teeth counts of the drivers divided by the product of all the teeth counts of the driven gears. What to do with the plus and minus sign? We will use a plus, uh, a positive sign, only if the gears are connected by the... They, are, they have an inner connection. And normally, for uh, externally connected gear, we will use the minor sign. So uh, this means that the negative sign switches the... Um, the, the direction of the rotation and the positive doesn't change it. So I think this is enough. Well, remind this, remind this part. We will use the the mu as the ratio of transmission from the output divided by the input. Okay. We also have the other convention of i. Remember from the last lesson, i normally is not not normally is i is the inverse of mu. Okay, so let me write this for you. So mu normally is the is defined as the ratio between the output angular velocity with respect to the input, while i is exactly the opposite of this and is the angular velocity of the input divided by the output. So in reducers, in speed reducers, we will normally prefer this, um, this parameter because this will be larger than one. This will be a speed reducer of 10, 20, 6, 60, whatever. Why the speed ratio will be a, a fractional number smaller than one it's like it's not as comfortable to use so we will normally prefer the i number but they are obviously equivalent to each other it's just a matter of a matter of realizing the order of these uh, angular velocities right so Taking that into account, remember that if we are talking about the the mu, the, the the speed ratio, we are defining this as the input in the denominator. So c zero should be in the numerator here. If we are defining the i, it will be exactly the opposite. All the numerators here will be in the denominators and vice versa. Okay, how many pairs, how many axles do we, do we need in a compound train? 
So there is a formula, but the basic idea is we have a limitation of the maximum ratio, right? Either in mu or in i, it doesn't mind. And we need to define the, the number m, which is an integral number, is the minimum, is the, not the minimum, the, the number of stages that we have. So let me to prove, let me prove to you this formula, which is really easy. Let's say that we have an i max of five, which means that for each pair of gears, the ratio between this and this is limited, is limited to, to have from phi to five times phi. Okay? We cannot reduce the speed faster than this. So imagine that we need some i, let's say 100. How many stages do we need? If we are lim limited to divided by 5 here, and then we add a second stage, this is a stage, a stage number 1, and this is a stage number 2. Imagine that here we again use the maximum uh, amount of um, reduction. Here we are dividing by 5, here we are dividing by 5 again. So the total trans tra transmission ratio would be the product of this. And if we have n stages, it will be just a matter of, as you can see, taking the exponential of the maximum allowed fraction to the nth power. So the equation that must uh, be honored is that i, which is the fraction that we need, should be um, larger or sorry, should be smaller than the i maxed for n stages, which is the i in each of the individual pairs, let's call this um, its max individual to the nth power. Okay? So we have this by definition of the problem. We have a limitation for mechanical reasons. This normally is 5 or 7. And this is the unknown. So how to solve for something that is in the exponential, we just take the logarithm, of course. So the logarithm in base n of i should be equal to i max, right? And this is how we solve logarithm. Let me, let me rewind a little bit. Just logarithm in any base, actually. Logarithm of i equals n logarith logarithm of i max. Okay, that's better now. So n can be solved as the logarithm in any base of i divided by the logarithm in the same base, that's important, of i max. And this is actually the minimum number of stage of stages you can pick a, lar a larger number if you need or if you want to right okay so that's where the formula comes from and now how to define the number of teeth the teeth count in an ordinary train first we find out the using the logarithm formula the number of stages and then we write this ratio formula with all the product of the partial uh, ratios between e each pair of gears, of gears. And then we must check a different number of um, constraints. For example, we must check that each individual ratio is within the valid uh, range, is not larger than the maximum ratio and also any other mechanical constraints that we may have in particular problems, okay? 
So we will see this with um, a set of different situations that we, 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 we may find. So for ordinary trains, uh, we will analyze the case one. The case one is when we have a speed ratio that is too large for one single pair, and the number of teeth, uh, the teeth count is smaller than the maximum number of teeth. So this is a, a, a common situation, right? So the speed ratio, let's say, is 50, is larger than 5, OK? And, uh, and that we will see an example of this in a moment. Case 2 if is, again, when we have a speed ratio exactly the same, but it's an irreductible fraction of terms. The third case. And the fourth case, when we have an irrational number. Okay, we will see one by one with some some of them. We will see an example. So case one, we have a ratio larger than the maximum for one single stage. We have the constraints of the teeth should be smaller than some maximum. So first, we fix the n using the logarithm formula, and then we write this this or this the left or the right formula, right? Uh, normally, we know the mu, or we know the i, and then we start uh, writing integral numbers here on the in the numerator and denominator to match the product that comes from the formula of the product. We will see this with an example. It's easier to see with an example than to explain normally. So we want to design a reducer, a speed reducer, by means of a compound gear train with this reduction of speed. It's 60, 25, 625 uh, divided by 42. With these constraints, the minimum fee is uh, 16, 17. The maximum number of teeth is 125, the maximum ratio for each stage, for each page, is 5. Okay, so I will take note of this. The I is 625, and the fee minimum is 17. Okay, so let's do it. So, first question is how many. Well, by the way, we are talking about a compound gear train. Okay, we are in this particular solution. Compound gear train. So, compound means we have different stages. How many stages? Well, let's evaluate this number numerically. So, I take the calculator. Let me, one second. 625 divided 42. Numerically, it's 14.880 something. Okay, so this is larger than I max. What happens if it is smaller than I max? Then it could mean that just a single pair of gears would be enough. But it is not. It's not a smaller, it's larger. So I need more than one stage. Since IMAX was 5, I can apply the logarithm formula. N minimum is the logarithm of I divided the logarithm of 5. So I find that this is, mm, it must be 1 something, but basically N should be 2 because n must be in the integer number, the first integer number, larger or equal than one point something. So we have the result that we need two stages, right? So I will just jump uh, away to drawing a proposal for a year train. It might be something like this. The input is here, omega 0, phi 0, 
P one prime, P one, P two prime. And this is omega two. This picture means the, the rollers, the supports. Okay, that's all. So what's the formula for the product of the the product formula for the velocity of this kind of compound you're saying? So we have I, the I in of the overall train is remember I is output input with respect to output okay so since this may be an inverse relationship between the teeth counts the omega zero is on the numerator the phi zero must be here on the denominator okay so phi zero goes with phi one prime and with a negative sign because they are connected in an outside connection outer connection then we have another minus uh, phi one phi two prime and you must check just double check then the output which is here in the denom denominator the ap appears as a teeth count in the numerator because of this inverse relationship so omega 2 is here phi 2 must be here okay so this is correct so the final product should be phi 1 prime phi 2 prime phi 0 phi 1 okay so now we have i which is 6 to 5 42 must be equal to p1 prime p2 prime p0 p1 and now we have one equation and four unknowns this is classic in this kind of problems i will have to um, play a little bit with the numbers with the factors with the factoring of the numbers and so on so let's analyze these numbers 6, 25. I will start, I, I need to factor out these numbers. So 6, uh, 25, it is obvious that it is a factor, it can be divided by 5. So 150, 25 divided by, sorry, come on. So 6, 25 divided by 5 again it's 25 5 5 5 1 okay so this number actually equals to 5 to the fourth power now we do the same with 42 42 divided by 2 is 21 3 7 7 1 so i think that's correct that's correct 2 3 7 okay that's the game this is the game we have four times five on the numerator and these other numbers in the denominator and we need to find we need to find potential valid values for these these are the pinions and these are the other gears the wheels is just a game of looking for potential valid numbers for example let's say mm, 3 and 7 that's 21 that's a valid uh, teeth count i may assign let me do it now uh, i will assign that to one of the two gears for example one okay now i only have the two left two is obviously uh, an invalid number of teeth we said that the minimum was like uh, 17 so let's say let's make that um, two times three three okay so altogether is larger than 17 we have 18 right 
So 18 will be phi zero. So the general rule is start with the pinions because they are the smaller number. Try to keep them as small as possible while being uh, larger than the minimum, which is 17 or 14, depending on the problem. And now I added here, realize, I added three and three on the denominator. Of course, I must add them to the numerator as well. Otherwise, this equal wouldn't be true, okay? So now we have five, 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 three, three. So one possibility is to say two fives and one three for each of the years, which amounts to 25, three, 75, and 75. This is also a great result because we, we only have one kind of large wheel. So the, the, the result of the problem is, let me summarize this, is uh, 18, 40, 0. Phi 1 equals to 21 and 75. 75. Okay. Uh, I designed this only taking into account the speed ratio. But imagine, imagine for a moment that I have some constraints on, for example, the, the position of the axles. Like imagine that this must be a recurrent, recurrent uh, gear train, gear train. In that case, we will have an, an additional constraint of this rate radius here plus this radius should be equal to this plus this. So there are um, many situations that we may find, but it depends a lot on the on the particular problems. So, okay, let's go on. Uh, case two, we had an irreductible fraction of prime terms, all of them smaller than uh, teeth count maximum. Okay, so let's try with... Uh, so the, 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 proced the procedure will be the same. We fix the, the teeth count, the, the number of stages, then we fix the pinions. So they have common factors and then find and factor the, the product, okay? Let's do it with this example. So we have, as, and again, a speed reducer with phi minimum 17, phi maximum 125, i max equal 5, and the i is 37721. Okay. So now I split this into factors. I have already done that beforehand. It was seven, 13 times 19, uh, 20, 29, sorry. And of course, 3 and 7. So the situation here is. This is an unreductible number of prime numbers. All of them are smaller than the maximum. So I could directly um, use the same, the same solution as before. So one teeth count phi zero, phi one prime, P1, P2 prime. Again, the formula would be I equal, so I takes the input is zero, so it would be P0, P1 prime, P2 prime, P1. Okay, and this must be equal to 13, 29, 3, and 7. So let's try to, to 
to pair this, these numbers. Imagine that uh, 20, 29 is a valid number, so let's say, for example, that phi 2 prime is that one. But now we have a problem that neither 7, 3, or 13 are valid this counts because, because they are all smaller than the minimum. The minimum was 17. So the solution here is to add additional factors. Let's say, uh, for example, another 3 here. And another three and three and three. Let's see if that is enough. Okay, yes, it's enough because we can pick. No, it's not enough. I need an, another one. Let's say another two, for example. Sometimes we, you have to try, it's a matter of trial and error, right? So this one is 21, this is a valid number for opinion teeth count, and then I have 9 and 2 is 18. It looks great now, so I will not use 20, I will not use a 29 directly. I will need to put the 20, 29 together with other factors. So, for example, let's say uh, this and this together, and also 13 with this. Okay, so 29 times 3 is 16 and 57, and this amounts to 6, 7. Okay, all of these are valid numbers. I should also, so um, notice that there is nothing here enforcing me to pick 70, 72, assigning 72 to phi 1 prime or to phi 2 prime. I am free to pick uh, which one I want to, to assign. So you should test whether phi 1 prime times phi 0 is, is not larger than, actually smaller, smaller than i max, and also phi 2 prime is smaller than i max. Okay, you must check that. So you have this additional degree of freedom of changing the order of the teeth count. In this case, any combination fulfills this, this equation, but sometimes only one of them will work, okay? So take care about that. So we also have uh, an approxi approximate solutions when we have a, a fraction of a large prime, large primes numbers, and we can use this approximation here. It's basically to approximate a velocity ratio A, B with a, B times a large number M or a small number M plus minus uh, a small integer C. This is to, um, to find a fraction that is numerically closer to the original fraction but has different factors. So some of the factors cancels out in the numerator and the, and the denominator and you have um, a better solution with a valid set of teeth counts, right? Another method is the continuous fraction method. Uh, this can be used, I will show an example now. This can be used when you have a fraction that uh, cannot be exactly implemented using just a pair of gears but you need for some reason to implement that using only one pair, right? So the continuous fraction method allows you to find an approximation of the ratio, of the ratio A, B, with two different numbers, D, E, that numerically are close to the original fraction. 
but using numbers that are in the allowed range of teeth counts. So let's see this last method with an example. We want to design a reducer with a single stage. Important single stage as close as possible to I, 6, 25, 42. Okay. So, single stage. So what is the numerical value of this fraction? I think I already computed that earlier. Let me check. Okay, so it's 14.88, sort of. So this is larger than I max. So there is no exact solution of this with one single stage. Why? Let's check again the the, the factors of this. Well, there is no, no need to, to check that. You have that in the, in the former example. The, there is no way to further simplify this fraction. So they are no common factors here that can be simplified. So if I only have directly an a reductible fraction of this teeth count, the only exact solution would be a pair of teeth with 42 and 625. But obviously, this teeth count is not valid. So there is no valid exact solution with only one stage. So now we want to find an approximate an approximate i prime value that is close enough to i which can be implemented in only one stage okay this is done using the continuous fraction method let me show you how to compute it so we the the goal is to to find as i explained something like this this is a divided by b okay integral numbers, I want to find out d divided by e. How to find these integrals? So this is the, there is a, an algorithm, it's like this. Takes, first take this number, 6, 25, 42. Uh, let me check. And we will write a table like this. So we have now to take the ratio between this number and this number and put the result here, the integral part of the result here, and the remainder, the remainder here, the remainder here. So let's make this calculation. Uh, we already computed that. It was 18, right? 14. 14. Okay. But then we um, we want the remainder, which is... So I take the result, I subtract 14 and multiply by 42 and I have 37. Okay, this is basically the, the operation that we must do, and then it repeats over and over again. I take this number and put it here, and repeat the operation, right? So 42 divided by 37 is 1, and the reminder is... The reminder is uh, Three, five. I copy the five here and I make this division here. Okay. Mm. 
okay yes of course this is two the reminder two this is two reminder one one two zero okay everything is, is correct so it takes the five here the two goes here the reminder so i always have to tap the reminder here until you have the zero okay and now the important part of this is these numbers here on the top okay this method is called the continuous fraction because this number means means that the original fraction 625 divided by 24 equals 1 divided by 1 plus 1 uh, not 1 sorry uh, 14 14 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by 7 and so on so you can see the pattern here these numbers in the continuous fraction are these numbers from left to right okay so the next step is to try trial and error you have to compute the fraction this one one uh, fourteenth and numerically compare that to i and try to design a year train with this fraction then you go on with this one divided by 20, uh, 14 plus one and then with this one and so on and you find different fractions uh, in the end each of these numbers let's say uh, this one should be summarized into uh, d e with d and e two integers right and then you try to assign directly the first number to c zero and the second number to c one if one of the two numbers are smaller than 17 then you have to multiply times n large enough so they get uh, the minimum number of, of teeth right and taking care of not going on the positive size and um, on the positive side and having too many teeth so basically you have in this case you will have one two three four five not five because if you include all the terms including the last one this fraction is exactly the original one and we know that that one is not viable so you don't have to trust uh, you don't have to test the last number only one two three four fractions you try all of them compute the number of teeth for all of, all of them and the numerical error or the approximate rate ratio ratio to the original one and you keep from all the feasible uh, teeth pairs keep the closest to the original ratio so that's the method okay when you have an irrational sorry when you have an irrational number there is no exact solution and you have to just uh, try with an approximation for example imagine that you want to approximate pi then you will have to use 3.14 or with more decimal if you need that to in your applications so that's all for ordinary trains let's go on with planetary gear trains okay planetary trains are totally different than uh, a regular um, gear train the reason is that it has two degrees of freedom okay let me show you this so in a regular gear train in an ordinary train you have omega zero omega one and so you may say i have two degrees of freedom because you have two um, two angular speeds but you have a kinematic joint here and each pair is connected to the other so omega one is a function of omega zero they are not free variables you actually have only one degree of freedom here and that holds for any compound ordinary tree 
Whereas in a planetary train, in an epicyclic train, you have two degrees of freedom. You will see that in a, in a second. You have different, um, different axes, axles, with different speed, rotational speeds. One of them, the one highlighted right now, is the one of the external, of the outer ring. It is denoted here omega m. Then, then you have the omega of the lever, right? It's not, it's not the, the angular speed of the planetary gears, it's itself of the small planetary gears. In this picture, you have three or four, left and right. The angular speed of the planet itself is not relevant. What is relevant to me is the angular speed of the holder of the, of the carrier of the planets. That is omega L. And then we have the angular speed of the central gear, normally called the sun. So you have three angular speeds. This makes this mechanism an extraordinary mechanism for, for, implementing, for implementing mathematical operations. You can do uh, sum, sums of numbers, subtraction of numbers, or just um, to add two different power inputs into only one. Like, uh, so that's the reason this kind of mechanism is used in the hybrid vehicles to put together the two inputs from two motors into the wheels or the other way around. You can take one of the axles as an input and two of them as output. That happens in the, in the distribution of the, of the power in a vehicle to the driven uh, wheels. That's called a differential, by the way. Later I will leave you a video for, for that. So we define um, a variable here in, for planetary trains, which is the apparent speed ratio, which is the ratio of the train. It would be the ratio of the train if the carrier were fixed. So the way of thinking about this that I like is to imagine that your point of view is on the carrier, okay? And the carrier is like um, attached to the ground. If the carrier, the carrier is this one, is this guy, this guy, denoted by B here, the carrier, here, this B, or here, this B, this, these arms over here, right? Imagine that this is attached to the ground. So in that case, actually, the planetary train would uh, be converted into a, an ordinary train because all the axles of all the gears of the gears would be static they wouldn't translate in a space okay but imagine that that happens then we define the apparent speed ratio from the sun to the outer ring so remember, omega m is the outer rim, omega o is the is normally the input in the sun. Okay. So here you just write the formula uh, using the regular formula for the um, compound trains. We will see an example later. But let me um, show to you. Uh, what 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 the apparent ratio looks like? So if you have a again um, epicyclic gear train gear train with three different speeds angular speeds, you have two degrees of freedom. But we will normally fix one of them to convert that into, for example, a speed reducer. We need to fix one. So one of the omegas will be zero in order to convert this into an usable reducer, right? So if the one, if the axle that is like uh, is attached, affixed to the ground is the, is the sun, notice this figure here, the sun has this symbol, it is attached to the ground, this is the reality on the left, 
and this is what the carrier looks, uh, what it sees, right? If I am on top of the carrier, I see this, what is depicted on the right, okay? Then another situation is when the, the carrier is the one that is locked. You can see here in the, the picture, the carrier, the B, is locked, the omega L is zero, and then both of the situations are the same. And then what happens in this picture when the outer ring is, is uh, affixed to the ground? This is the reference. This is actually a common case in, in, a, in reducer for, for, for motors, right? For electric motors. Normally it comes with this kind of reducer. So here normally the sun is the input and this arm over here is the output and the, the outer ring is attached to the body frame, is static. Okay, how to compute, how to, to solve problems with epicyclic gears? The key is the Willis formula. The Willis formula tells me that the apparent ratio, remember the apparent ratio is uh, the product is here on the bottom, is the product of all the consecutive gears. Imagine that the carrier is affixed to the ground, right? This is then an ordinary train. Imagine that this number, the apparent ratio, equal, is equal to this formula. And this is a really simple one. The ratio of velocities is the output divided by the input, normally, right? Notice here, omega m divided by omega o. But this is actually the apparent ratio. It's not the real one. What is the difference? The difference is that these velocities must be taken with respect to the carrier. And the carrier has a velocity of L. So if I just subtract the carrier speed from both the numerator and the denominator, I have that this fraction is correctly exactly the same than this one. And this allows me to put together velocities and ratios with teeth counts so I can find out the teeth counts. Okay? Later we will see an example with this formula. Before finishing, um, just a short overview of different planetary gear types the simple uh, planetary this is called the simple where the first wheel normally the sun is attached to the ground so omega o is zero we may have recurrent or not recurrent trains remember recurrent means that the input axle is aligned with the output axle is exactly uh, coincident with it and then we have also the differential train. The differential train, both of the three speeds are three, and they are, they are used as either inputs or outputs. Okay, for the case of the fixed sum like this, the formula goes on like this. You take the Willis formula and replace the omega zero with uh, zero. So you can simplify this a little bit and you find out that the actual, notice that the omega m is the, is the output, omega l, l is the input. So this is the actual mu, the actual ratio, speed ratio, is equal to 1 minus the apparent ratio, which in terms is, for this particular picture, is this product of teeth counts. Okay? So for, uh, this is a really powerful mechanism because for, with the same design, for different apparent ratios, you can have a speed reduction, a speed uh, increases, and with the different, with the opposite and the same direction of rotation. This is an example of a recurrent train, okay. So a differential is a mechanism with two degrees of freedom. 
it can be used as I told you to sum two input uh, two inputs of two two motor for example to put the output of two motors one a combustion uh, motor and an electric motor and put together all the power towards the wheels of the vehicle or they can be used to distribute the power. I really, really recommend you to see this video over here. Just Google for around the corner how differential steering works. It's a video with almost 100 years. It's a really old video, but it's really, really didactic. So I really recommend you to see that one. So some problems. I will use the Willis formula to write to design a reducer okay let me to take note of this so I want to design an epicyclic gear gear with 1005 to 221 with the usual constraints of the minimum and maximum teeth count okay so epicyclic, uh, it was okay. It was not copied here, but the original problem told me about using. Um, I, if I remember correctly, okay, epi, a simple. Let's say. Let's try to write this as a simple epicyclic. Okay, because otherwise I need either to fix the the outer ring or the sun. I need to fix one of them. Okay, otherwise uh, I cannot do a, a reducer with an epithelium. So using the Willis formula first, I or let me to use the same notation. Let's write the mu, which is the speed ratio, would be 2 to 1 to 2005. The apparent, the apparent ratio is um, let's say that the output is the the outer ring minus the level arm speed divided by omega zero minus omega l so i have a zero here so this actually i said that this is the output divided by the input and the output was the outer ring and the input will be the lever okay so i need to write down this formula the apparent move in terms of the actual move okay so i can replace that here or there is no no need for that actually i can just replace omega m equals 2 to 1 1005 omega l if i want so it's just uh, you can do it, it as you want in this case notice this will be simply like one minus omega m divided by omega l okay so this is actually omega okay it's easy yes one minus two to one one thousand five So it's just, let me compute this, 1005 minus 2 to 1 is 7, 8, T, 4. Okay, that's the apparent ratio that I need to implement the actual speed reduction here. Okay, I need this. So the Willis formula tells me that I need this apparent uh, speed ratio. So what's the what's this number numerically? It's close to 
I think it's close to one, so it's not a, a problematic a problematic number. But just me let me just verify that. 0 0.78. Okay. So if it's not smaller than one fifth, so it's fine. In theory it can be done. So uh, now the problem are the factors. What are the factors? The uh, factors of these two numbers. So seven, eight, four. Let me check if I have it. No. So divided by two. Three nine two. Another two again. One sixty. One ninety six. Then seven seven. Okay. And what about one thousand five? It's obviously five is a factor. Then two thousand one. Okay, so it's in theory you have to try and error, try all the possible factors. I find out that three sixty seven, which actually is a prime number. Okay, so the fraction is like this two to the fourth power times seven square 5 3 60 7 so imagine that I want to design a compound gear train forget for a second about the epicyclic train would it be possible to do this with only one stage in spite of this so in theory the what is the, the ratio doesn't enforce me to use two stages, but the teeth counts are not feasible here. I have like seven, seven hundred and one thousand here, so they are two large numbers. So I will need to split this into two stages. So this this uh, prototype of Epicyclic, epicyclic um, train doesn't work. This one, this is the regular one, the most common one. Well, when I have the sun, the carrier, and the ring. Okay, why it doesn't work? Because here I have phi zero, phi of the planet, and phi n, and computing the apparent the apparent ratio is the speed of the output divided by the input. Sorry, it was the input. Uh, yes, exactly. It doesn't care if the input is actually fixed. Okay. In this particular case, remember it was fixed, but for the sake of the apparent ratio, I have to think as if the carrier where the one that is fixed okay no problem with this so this would be phi zero phi of the planet phi of the planet gain and phi m so the planet cancels out and i only have phi zero phi m so you can see the problem here with only one stage there is no way of assigning this number to this number and this number to this number because they are much larger than 120 something which is the maximum teeth count possible solution uh, of course i have to discard this uh, prototype and i need like a compound with two stages a compound planetary gear train like this here is the omega L of the level arm with two 
different gears on it. Here we have the omega O. Here we have C O and C planet one, C planet two, and the outer C M. This can be actually an inner on outer connection. I don't care about that. It should be like that or like this. This is CM. Okay, notice the difference here. The difference omega m. In this case, mu a, mu a of the apparent, the apparent ratio would be the ratio between om omega m and omega o. Okay, exactly the same down here, but now the arrangement of the different gears gives me this equation is C O C planet one negative sign times C planet two divided by C M. Okay. So you should just uh, Right, putting putting everything together, I have this and this. Okay. Let me clean this up a little bit. So C zero, C planet two, C planet one, C M equals two 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 four times two twice seven five three. 67. Okay. Uh, notice that I just discarded the negative negative sign. The negative sign gives me information about the direction of rotation, but I don't care about the direction right now. Only the actual modulus. So the the, the speed ratio, right? So. Mm, right now I'm not still ready because the you can see the teeth counts doesn't fit. Five times three still is smaller than seventeen, so I will need an additional two here. It may be an additional two, an additional three, an additional four, but I will try first with the smallest possible number. So now 2, 5, and 3 is 13. And I will assign this to, let's say, this one, the planet 1, for example, 67 to the outer ring. And let's say 2, 2, 4, 8, 32. And 49. Okay, in theory, this may work. So something like this may work, and this is a possible uh, a possible teeth counts for the for this problem. Notice that uh, we may need to check for additional issues like this radius plus this radius might be equal to this radius times this radius so this may impose limitations in the modules in the module of the of the of the gears okay i will also just show you this final problem this is taken from the alejo abello's book which i strongly recommend you in this case, this is a really complicated uh, epithetic gear train, but it's sort of easy to compute at least the teeth counts of the different gears that are missing. For example, here you need to find out the teeth count of one and six. How to compute them? If all of them have the same m of seven, remember m was the step 
size between the teeth in millimeters divided by t by pi so m equals 7 you know m for all of them so you can convert forth and back between teeth count and the radius in real size in millimeters so you can find out that the sum of the radius of let's say phi 3 plus twice the radius of phi 2 must be equal to the one one once the radius of one from that equation you can solve for the phi one now if you need phi 6 it can be found out from let's say uh, like this r uh, the radius of 3 plus once the radius of 2 plus once the radius of 4 plus twice the radius of 5 equals equals to the radius of 6 okay from that if you write that equation you will find out the phi count okay um, regarding the velocities just apply the the willis formula and think a little bit and if you have questions just ask me okay i hope you enjoyed this lesson see you